Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. Welcome to the Space Lobster video flight director commentary edition. Figured it'd be fun for us to watch the Space Lobster video together, check it out. I'll do some commenting on what was going through my head or what was happening on flight day and just figure we'd take a look at it and watch together and uh, we'll see what happens. Let's take a look. All right, so here's our, our little intro. It was a beautiful sunrise that we got to witness while we were setting up today. Launch was about hour and a half after sunrise. Uh, so we, we did get some nice views of that, but not during the actual flight itself. There's our Space Lobster in the live broadcast getting shown off to everybody before launch. And our balloon filling, uh, which went very well that morning. The scent rate was a little bit faster than we wanted, but it's uh, a good filling. Everything was pretty easy. Winds were light. And then we're getting ready for launch here. And just watch my hands when I launch this. I do something funny with my hands. Wow. <laughs> uh, that was my attempt at trying not to shake the payload as it was launching because I wanted really good footage of the Space Lobster flying away from me, uh, but I failed. It didn't. It still shook anyways, and uh, it just really hard to do. But uh, it did a lot of spinning too during the flight. It was a little bit lopsided as far as the weight was concerned, so most of this video that I put together was me trying to find clips of it not spinning so much, uh, which is really hard to do. But we still got some good shots of Canadagua, Canadagua Lake, uh, the balloon shots were great throughout the whole flight too. And then also, as we're climbing here, watch the temperatures that are in the bottom left hand corner. So you'll see the outside temperature, the air temperature drop pretty drastically, which is very well, uh, very much expected. And uh, But the payload temperature stays way high. It's like 70 degrees inside the payload while it's negative 48 degrees outside the payload, which is crazy. I don't know why it was so warm inside the payload other than it was a really warm day that day. Uh, but uh, apparently the styrofoam box was really well insulated for this flight. I don't know why it was so much, but uh, one of the other things that I loved about this flight was the, uh, the reflection of the sun off the lakes. The sun was still pretty low in the sky for this flight, so got some great reflection off there. That's something that we don't normally see on our flights, so that was pretty awesome. Uh, but a little hazy during the flight. You can see these little wispy clouds all over the place made the ground not as clear as it's been in the past but still pretty good but you can see those little little bit of cloud coverage the kind of haze there that's all over the place but you still see the shoreline there from lake ontario you can see rochester uh, and the that sun reflection really made those lakes stand out quite a bit uh, but now we're approaching peak altitude and look at the temperature again here now 12 degrees fahrenheit that is actually not accurate uh, so that's solar radiation causing the temperature reading to be higher than it should actually be. Should be something more like negative 20 or negative 10, but solar radiation causes that to be higher than it actually is. So, uh, And in some of those balloon shots, uh, you may have to go back and look, but you can see the moon. It looks really tiny, but it's in there. Uh, but now we're coming up on burst here. And there's our burst. Space Lobster does a nice little barrel roll there, which is pretty cool. He starts shaking around on the way down. Uh, but the balloon, you can see the moon there in the background, a little tiny, but there's the balloon burst. It goes off to the side there, so the balloon kind of broke from the side, and you can see it push off and head to the left of the screen. Moon's in the bottom of the screen right now. There's the balloon pushing off to the side, causing it to barrel roll, which is pretty cool. You got another nice shot of the lakes as it was, as the top camera, this is the camera that's pointed up, is spinning around. And then on the way down, the Space Lobster and the payload spun more than I've ever seen any of our payloads spin before. I mean, it got spinning so fast. This is just a fraction of what it was actually spinning. I tried to capture that by putting some effects on the screen, making it look like the camera was cutting out. It wasn't, but look at that spin rate there. That is not even the fastest that it was. I couldn't put in the fastest that it was because you just couldn't see anything. It was spinning so fast. It was crazy. I've never seen that happen before, but. You see the payload temperature now again, it's still still in the 40 degree range. It never dropped really below about 40 degrees throughout the whole thing. So now we're, now we're coming down, we're getting towards the end of the flight. It's finally, here's a little bit of stabilized flight now, not spinning so much, uh, but it didn't go very far from our launch site. You can actually see the launch site there, uh, but it's it getting some nice shots of our hometown and, and our lake there on the way up and on the way down because it didn't go very far. And now as we're, we're coming down. I'm trying to track this the whole time. There's our parachute. I always like to see the parachute performance. It's always nice to me. I like to see how it 
how it's doing and if the balloon is interfering or the, what's left of the balloon is interfering with the par parachute. Uh, but now at 10,000 feet, I, I'm usually starting to look for it at this point. I've never seen it in the air this high, and it's probably going to be hard to do. See some balloon fragments here passing through the camera. I always think that's kind of cool, as long as it doesn't hit something or break something. Uh, but, but now I'm looking for it. I'm trying to see it. I, I've never seen it this high. I've only seen it when it's a couple hundred feet off the ground, not a couple thousand. But that doesn't stop me from trying. So I'm usually out of the car looking. i got some binoculars trying to locate it, trying to figure out where it is. I think I just missed it, because uh, as it starts to get down a couple thousand feet here, I'm pretty much right underneath it. I'm just off to the side here, uh, tracking it down. And now we're now the landing alarm is active, and I'm pretty much right underneath it. I was looking straight up in the sky. I think I just missed it. It went off to the side. Uh, now as it's over the trees, I'm looking over the road, thinking it's over there. I'm on that road right there that's in the distance. Uh, but I, I missed the actual landing itself. But here it comes in for the landing, hits that tree, really gets a good jolt on landing, and that's where that's where the space lobster ended up for the next nine hours. It took a long time to get out of that tree. Would have liked it to not be up there so long, but it wasn't really that stressful, not as stressful as some of the other tree recoveries, and that was just because we could drive right up to it. Air conditioning was close by, water, food, everything was close by. So we could just keep trying until we finally got it down. It just shook free out of the tree and just came sliding down after it got itself freed. So overall, really successful flight. Flight computers all operated great. Uh, the Space Lobster came back with the payload. It didn't shake itself free or break off or anything like that, which is good. Uh, the, the landing prediction software that we had wasn't working on this flight. That was actually just human error. That was my mistake for not taking it off of test mode before we launched. Um, but other than that, it was a, a really good flight and everything operated really well. And so uh, hopefully you guys like this video. I like doing it and maybe we'll try to do a couple more of these coming up in the future. So thanks everybody for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video. See ya.